10 pound maybe. 10 pound? Well, I was thinking around about the 20 pound mark between us. Five pounds maybe, that's about it. Uh, about a tenner, maybe 15 pounds. About two. One, one and a half. Two, three. Uh, Probably too one, many. Two, three, four, five, five to six. Seven. I don't have quite that many, but yes. They are not talking about cigarettes, alcohol, or even marijuana. In fact, they're talking about something far more available and socially acceptable in everyday life. They're talking about coffee. Coffee is a drug like any other. It is consumed so widely and in such mundane settings that we often forget that it is a drug and by far the world's most popular psychoactive one. Coffee is the second most sold commodity in the world, with only oil out selling it. So if coffee has been consumed at this highly alarming rate, how do people cope without it? Fine, not a problem with me. My little brother on the other hand, he, he stopped clawing the wall without it. For me, not a problem. I can, but that's not very favourable. Mm -hmm. Yes, I suppose so. Yes, could we? No, you couldn't. No, I couldn't then. <laughs> My wife knows more about me than I do. True, true. After 50 odd years of marriage, yes. <laughs> Coffee has proven to cause serious harm to your health if too much is consumed. This is Sarah, a former coffee addict. When after my son was born, I, he didn't sleep through the night very well. So what I tended to do was just help myself to a coffee. Um, I just had a coffee filter machine, a cafetier and a percolator all set up. So I was constantly just reaching for a drink the whole time. And without realising it, afterwards when I sort of didn't have so many cups of coffee, I was ending up with headaches, sweats and cold, hot and cold alternately and feeling really, really rough. Um, anyhow, about a year went on and he still hadn't slept through the night, so we took him to a specialist and then the specialist sort of assessing him and also, and myself as well, and she realised because I was shaking that there was something wrong with me as well. So he was very high on the scale of hyperactivity, obviously because I was drinking the coffee and obviously feeding him, so it was going through to his system. Um, but with myself, she withdrew, you know, kind of gradually withdrew me from coffee from three months, six months. Um, several cups a day until I got down to just having one cup and I was a whole lot better. I, I didn't know really, it was just when I went to the specialist um, and the bio lab in London when they did sweat tests and um, other tests that they actually said, you know, the, the amount of caffeine inside me was ridiculous. And there were quite a lot of people in there, mostly um, it was alcohol with them but a lot of them were coffee as well. They said, well they couldn't have a drink during the day and they were working they'd reach for a coffee, so but just, just be aware really of, of how many coffees you consume. Instead of having another coffee, drink water, you know, water, much better, much better for you because it can destroy your life, definitely, you know, if, you've, if that's all you've got to keep you going and you rely on that to keep you awake, then, you know, it's, it's not at all good. As you can tell, Sarah has suffered. But how many more people are out there suffering and unaware? So next time you reach for a coffee, think, do you really need it? <laughs>